April 20th, I get an open vision and an audible voice. And the audible voice said this, the game of risk. And it was loud, masculine, and I knew it to be God's voice. Then the vision, a table is thrown in a room. I mean, literally, I see a room and then a table just comes slamming down. Just like that. So then there's four chairs that were set in there also. And they came in. Four chairs set right in the room. Then the players came in. The first player that came in and sat down. I knew this player was a homosexual. And I'm just like taking this in. Then I was told the homosexual did believe in God, but believed that he would be forgiven for his homosexuality or accepted by God as a homosexual because God loves him for, for being that way. Well, then I was told that this man was um, a self-righteous uh, type of person that only took satisfaction of the flesh of an anus over God's true way. They only cared about their own pleasure of having intimacy with where you go to the bathroom. That is an abomination to God. Then another Christian entered the room and I knew this Christian was a woman and that she wanted to conquer the world as being a Christian. I'm going to do everything for God. But I was told she conquered nothing. But she was a participant with a gay man and not telling him the truth. That his lifestyle is an abomination to God. So that he would have a choice to look it up himself and repent. Because we are responsible for telling the truth. And that's what Jesus said. Tell the truth. It's wrote in scripture. If you read the Bible, you would know this to be true. And then another man entered the room. And this is a bisexual guy. And he sits down to the game. And I was told he's no better than a fallen angel that took men and women for carnal, perverse um, satisfaction. They believe they can have whatever they want and switch whatever they want. It's not that way. That's an arrogant, prideful person as with the first one. It is disgusting to have intimacy in a woman's and I was told he had sex with a woman in her in her natural way where a man plants a seed and in her anus and goes to men to get that done to him for his own self-satisfaction and carnal perversions. And then I was told the Christian woman, too, who thought that these are best friends to, to continually participate with them as best friends because it's all love. No, you are not to participate with them. You are to tell them what their errors are and that they will go to hell and their soul will be lost forever. You are not a true Christian. You are not loving your neighbor that is participating in abominations of God. If you do not tell them, you are responsible. So, once you tell them the truth, you're off the hook. So, this, this is like right now. We're, we're at the end of days, and if everyone doesn't start doing God's will how it used to be, you're going to be held accountable for not telling um, them. So, then a fourth player was there, and he's just sitting there, and no one has a clue who he is. And I'm, like, wondering what's going on with this guy. And then I told... I was told that this person was an atheist, didn't believe in nothing, didn't even want to, it, lazy, didn't want to participate. Basically, it was like a soulless person sitting there. It, it was weird. I can't explain it. And this person um, 
will go to hell. And Jesus will say, this is a person I never knew you, and put them in hell. And the Christian woman, if she knows a person like this, then she has to tell them. Because I guess there's a lot of women um, like giving in to these type of people and, and saying love is love. No, it's not. There are there are repercussions for lack of truth. When you're not telling the truth of the gospel, you're at fault too. So you have to give that person a chance, being a Christian. Hey, you need to believe in something because if you just believe that this is you just live and go nowhere, they go to outer darkness. And you don't want to go there. If you looked at any of my videos when I was in the outer darkness, that's a terrible place to go to. So as a Christian, you're responsible for people. If you love God, you will tell the truth, just like all the disciples did. And no one's doing it anymore. And um, then I was told about a whoremonger as a person who has dealings with prostitutes especially a sexual promiscuous man and then Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife and they become one flesh and um, then I was giving these scriptures and these this is serious this is someone's life their soul their very soul so, Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And you know what that means. And then men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves, they do penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them to a debased mind to do what ought not be done. And then Mark 10, chapter 10, verse 6 through 9. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they no longer, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. That therefore God has joined together. Let no man separate. And anyone that participates with this lie. You have to even ask God for forgiving for lying to even them to uh, you're agreeing with a lie. I mean, uh, so there's so many people out there that are agreeing with these people's lies. They know what they're doing. It's not, oh, I, I think I was born with, with a, a weird mind. No, they know what they're doing. They're desiring that and using that as an excuse. That, that's what I was told. Leviticus, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Jude chapter 1 verse 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. So, people that even, like that atheist, there are people out there that believe in all different gods, but believe Jesus to be the Savior of the world, and believe they're going home, but they'll believe these other gods help them also. So I was told to mention that. They go straight to hell. you got to repent from it. God is a very loving, compassionate person. He sent his son here. God himself came here so that people would be saved from their immoralities. And you have to stop doing them. And if you're married to a man or a woman's married to a woman, you have to get a divorce and then repent and ask God 
for forgiveness. And the best thing for you to do is just like with um, Solomon, is separate. God had Solomon's wife because she was a non-believer and then she believed at the end and, and put Solomon in God's house through all that. She was sent back to her country and was never to um, see him again. Even though she loved him from afar, she did that because she loved God at this point because he healed her and showed her his trueness. And if you read that book, you'll understand what I'm talking about. You should already know it. So they had to separate, and this is what everyone's going to have to do um, in repentance, and you have to stop it. You have to. We're at a point where it is like a major self examining. It isn't about is your neighbor going home or is your sister going home? This is about you should know that you're not sinning and you're going home and you should help everyone else out because you know where we're at in the time in history that we're in the end of days and you know if you watch this channel that God told me that um, America is the great whore of Babylon and it's the most evilest generation the sexual immorality is um, beyond any time in history if you don't separate ask for forgiveness and take God's grace you're going to hell but God is good you just have to stop doing those acts and ask God for forgiveness and if you have that attitude well no I I'm not giving up my life I worked for 20 years and I stayed with this person then you're going to hell. If you can separate and both repent together and not want to live in your house, and if you're married, you need to get a divorce, and you need to stop that abomination act. And this is what I was told to tell you. It's called the game of risk. You're playing a game with your very life.